Good evening ladies and gentlemen, Rapid Chess here with the video of the day. And uh, today I decided to show you this game between Gary Kasparov and uh, Mikhail Tal. This is, uh, I'd say, according to chess base, it's the only game um, which had a decisive result. The others were drawn. Uh, I don't account for a training match or blitz game where Kasparov won. Uh, the rest were drawn. Um, I should say that I'm a little bit surprised that, uh, not surprised, but uh, Michael Tal had um, so many uh, health issues, yeah, and um, a lot of like problems with different addictions and things like that, but still he maintained an excellent career and uh, in 1988 became the first uh, world blitz champion which is quite amazing, yeah, after the 60s where he became the world champion um, and already at that time he had uh, health issues. Um, this is like the most uh, uh, called uh, mm, uh, reason why he lost uh, a rematch to Batvinik, yeah, because he had uh, some conditions and they didn't allow him to postpone the match because he was playing Batvinik and Batvinik had a lot of political power. Um, so, and still he played uh, very good, had basically very good results uh, till um, uh, 90s, basically when he died. All right, uh, so let's, uh, uh, let's continue. Um, I will not introduce Kasparov to you, so d4, knight f6, and e6. A little bit surprising to see from uh, Tal, but as long as he played chess all his life, probably he played every opening. So not a surprise. e3, very modest. Um, probably some uh, preparation against Karpov. So uh, this is uh, like... Kasparov played so much uh, chess against uh, Karpov and had so such an excellent uh, coaches that uh, basically preparing to this match he had prepared to every opponent of his life. Uh, and in this position, um, so um, very standard play actually. Um, According to Engine, uh, Tal equalized very easily. Um, he has uh, developed his knights, made castles. This opponent d5 is very nice. So actually, uh, one more thing about this position that this is very standard position. It, it can occur from d4, c4 and e4 naturally. Yeah, from let's say Karo Khan very easily to obtain something like this in uh, Panov attack and things like that. So, uh, uh, Gary captured with uh, the pawn and uh, uh, now this um, bishop is attacked. So, uh, Gary took on uh, c3 and uh, pawn takes. Uh, uh, commentator put an exclamation mark to this move, but the engine says that knight is better. I would take with the knight, of course. Uh, because we can allow this to happen. Uh, so this is much better for white because um, in this Panov attack uh, positions uh, um, normally white uh, creates some attack against the king. Yeah, so this is pawn is this pawn is much more important than the, let's say this one. All right, so Gary took with the pawn. Uh, and uh, knight to e7. A bit. Um, I, I don't really understand this move. Uh, rook to e8 was much much better. Uh, this knight uh, probably Tal thought that I don't know. Uh, this this knight doesn't have any uh, work, so he has he wants to move it to protect the king and find maybe something uh, some other place for this knight. So knight e7, uh, queen c2, uh, and bishop d7. Again, I don't quite understand this move. Uh, I think uh, bishop um, um, is well placed. You could just uh, develop your uh, uh, rook. 
and bishop to g5. Again, uh, I don't know why uh, this uh, annotator places an uh, exclamation mark to this move, it's the most natural. Knight to g6, and f4. Uh, this move actually struck me when I checked this uh, this game because I wouldn't play like this. <laughs> Don't play like this in chess because uh, it weakens the king and uh, what's more important is that um, um, I don't know uh, if you I just think that if you put it on f5 then you close this diagonal for your battery and no one plays like this but except for Kasparov probably and uh, Tal played the best move h6 and they exchanged and this position uh, this move uh, really deserves an exclamation so f5 uh, I think uh, what uh, this uh, grandmasters understand much better than uh, uh, regular players, amateurs, is this concept of space. Yeah, they talk about space all the time, and I just, for me, it's just a weakness. Yeah, but uh, uh, when grandmaster play, they manage to throw back the. Uh, opponent's pieces and then create um, like move the position up that's very important but I would never play this move because it stops my bishop it stops my queen and uh, and it appears to be the best knight is seven knight to g3 it looks quite slow but um, you see that um, when you're playing against an opponent uh, which creates an attack against your king, it's very important to get the open file. It um, uh, you, you think, why do I take this open file? But somehow you create all the time a uh, counterattack. And this, uh, as you see, uh, just black is not even near to create anything. And uh, black, sorry, white is uh, getting all over black's position so knight to g3 knight c7 knight c8 uh, maybe playing with knight to d6 later rook f4 and uh, queen f2 uh, uh, kasparov i mean every player but i've heard that uh, about Kasparov that he was very capable of playing with like uh, creating attack with this um, small amount of pieces yeah um, so knight uh, rook and queen this bishop is not playing actually but um, when you have uh, like pieces near the king you can create a very powerful attack so knight to d6 knight h5 um, again very natural um, you want to play uh, rook to g4 and attack the g g7 and in this position already we can see that um, the position is absolutely winning according to engine it's plus four um, uh, all these pieces are near the king and this piece is uh, quite far and black doesn't have a uh, counterplay yeah you have to like have uh, at, by this point uh, some compensation maybe pawn a couple of pawns so you can uh, let's say sacrifice an exchange or something and then it's uh, long uh, long end game and uh, you don't have time so your opponent might made a mistake but uh, black didn't do a good job by pr creating counter chances uh, knight g7 and uh, tell played knight to e5 so let's take and it goes into agent f6 is absolutely winning after queen h4 attacking h6 and mating a couple of moves so he didn't take this he played uh, uh, knight is 4 takes takes and f6 solidifying the knight here and a lot of threats again uh, queen to g3 is the main move king h7 uh, queen f f4 
yeah uh, so now this h6 pawn is attacked and uh, in this position tau resigned uh, because after king a king h8 rook to g7 is a threat to give mate so what uh, black has to give up the queen and uh, white wins all right uh, thank you very much for uh, watching and see you next time